a theatrical experience, a unique theatrical experience that has to do with, let's see, kind of Jello and Captain Crunch and virtual reality and chaos theory and I three, see. Yeah, <laughs> and three blue men. Do not adjust your set. <laughs> Many things that I can point to at Blue Man had tremendous influence on the way that myself and Chris and Phil looked at how we wanted to have the organization be and, and how we wanted it to all kind of flow. It's a strange place. Certainly one of the things was the fact of having done about you know, 1,300 shows in a row. It definitely puts into your head a certain way of how you want shows to run and how you want it to be on stage and off stage. The show is entitled to. <laughs> it was just, what, what else are we going to call it? And you know, they, you, you have a deadline for when you have to have to, a title by. Because they have to print it in the playbook and all the ads. Right. And usually and you're, you're working on other things that are more important. Right. So you have about like, five minutes to come up with a title. And there you go, <laughs> two? <Just> look around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> before they got blue. Hello! Chris and Phil uh, used to take one of our goods, which is the crepe and cheese, basically a uh, crepe that is wrapped in blue cheese, and they used to throw it on each other <laughs> and catch it with, you know, with the mouth wide open. These skills would later prove useful in the theater. <laughs> Tonight, meet Blue Men Group. From deconstructionism to Cap'n Crunch cereal, Blue Man Group has had a lot to say about the culture we live in. What was the operative idea when you began? We didn't want to sit around waiting for some agent to discover us. or for, We just wanted to go out. We had some things to say. We had some things we wanted to express. We didn't know how to do it, and we just did it. Why blue rather than red? Or why blue rather than yellow? Well, I think Chris really had this initial image of this bald and blue character. Right. It's, it was afterward that we thought, okay. well, you know, red and yellow, all these other colors kind of have other kind of baggage associated with them, and blue is like you know, earth. I think early on, the show was sustained for the first six months just on word of mouth. And people were coming to the show, but it wasn't until Regis and, and Kathy Lee came to see the show and loved it. They are, they're covered in blue, and uh, their faces are in blue. We performed on their show, and not only that, Regis got involved in the, um, we did paint and, paint and cheese. He got involved and, and um, got excited about it, and I think that at that point, he sort of made it okay for the rest of the world to like this sort of weird and mysterious thing known as Blue Man Group. So they put us on the map. A couple of months ago, we had a uh, performance on the, on the show in New York, you know, Blue Man Group. I asked them if they could bring me a little token from their show in New York City, and this is what they brought me. And I understand they had uh, a crazy time getting it here. They made it. They made a tape. We got that. Let's take a look at the tape. This is them bringing me the jello. interesting in terms of Blue Man history and Milestone, how many shows Chris, Matt, and Phil did before anyone else was introduced to the part. I thought that was really, really interesting just to see how long they were able to just do it on their own before they realized, hey, we can paint other people blue and train them and teach them what we do. I had been playing drums in the, in the show for a couple of years before Phil hurt his thumb in an accident involving a power tool. After two years, I was, I was going to go on. I had made lots of preparation for it. Joe McGuire, one of the stage managers, would help me out. Every couple of weeks, we'd run through the show or walk through it. And eventually, um, I got the call and I was going on. And I got all bald and blue. But Phil ended up going on 
anyway that night. Uh, it wasn't until the next day that I went on after Phil had gone to his doctor who informed him, I believe, that he shouldn't go and do a show with a busted up thumb. <laughs>